All right, so I know I've, I've done some business with a couple of you guys. Some of you have not uh, done anything or probably met before in the past, but there is a couple of different ways of financing properties rather than going the traditional conventional, going to your local bank credit union and getting an FHA, VA, USDA, all the other type of loans, or literally just paying something in complete full on cash. So there's a lot of terms uh, for a lot of different ways to finance something and buying something. That is either hard money, private money, seller financing subject to, and a plethora of other bunch of other terms that depending on where you are in your real estate uh, journey, you'll start to uh, understand them more or, or learn about them and utilize them. But typically for first time investors, they either pay for something complete cash or they get a traditional loan or they go to someone like me or a family friend who happens to have some money. So I am a loan officer. I do hard money lending. So hard money lending is short term debt. Uh, the easiest way that I break this down for people to understand the difference between the word private money and the word hard money is hard money is some sort of institution like a bank, but not your mom and pop type of millionaire that has money that can lend you money. Um, uh, private money is family, friend, literally just that in simplest terms, whoever that may be as a friend, whoever that might be as, as a family member. Uh, private money, I will always tell people to use over me because I know that it's cheaper and you can have a lot of leeway with how you pay that back and when you pay that back and just how really creative you can be. When uncle, you know, pop, mom, whoever, family friend, when they tap out of money or they don't have money or they can't finance what you want to buy, that's where you kind of come to me and I can say yes practically to anything. Uh, there are certain things that a private or a hard money lender won't touch depending on who you're talking to. But me as a lender, we can touch just about everything minus bear land. Um, bear land is very risky. So lenders like us that are short term debt, we don't like lending on something where there's it's going to take longer than a six to six to 12 month period um, because it's just bear land. There's nothing there in simplest terms. Um, when it comes to hard money lending, uh, again, the difference that I was mentioning between, you know, family friend is that hard money lending is uh, usually about a six to 12 month term. Yeah, rates depend on your credit, a uh, little bit of your uh, experience and the location and the type of project that you're doing. So granted, every hard money lender is going to base it a little bit differently. We base it off of those parameters. Uh, so your experience, your credit, the location and the type of project. Uh, depending on all that, if we were just say the average uh, overall rate and term, you're probably going to be anywhere between six to 12 months and we're going to charge anywhere between 10 and a half to 11 percent in interest. They're interest only payments. Uh, there's no prepayment penalties. So the quicker you finish these jobs, these projects, the faster uh, you obviously can get it listed. And also you save money on the interest uh, itself because it's literally you pay for what you use. So we're not going to immediately charge you everything. And again, depending on how fast you finish, you save out on your holding cost. Um, and so yeah, that's as far as uh, rates, uh, again, six to 12 uh, months, and then again, 10 and a half to 11% on interest and um, interest only payments. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that's term wise. Um, that's about it on the actual term. Now, when it comes to leveraging, meaning how much we will actually give to somebody for a project, kind of depends on those parameters that I just mentioned. But us as a hard money lender, we are able to go up to 90% of the total cost. So let's say your project of the house is 250,000 and you need $50,000 in renovations. The total cost is 300,000. We are able to give you up to 90% of that total cost. The difference being 10%. So your down payment for that project would be $30,000 minus closing costs, which that is insurance, taxes, appraisal, uh, and points. Uh, points is where hard money lenders make their money and that varies from anywhere from a point and a half to two points and that's based off your loan amount. So again, 270,000, you times that point, point zero 0.02 and that would be paid at closing in addition to your down payment plus your normal closing cost. Um, so that is what hard money terms leverages and the nice thing about these uh, 
loans that we do is we include your rehab funds. So again, in that scenario that I gave you, the 50,000, you, it's already budgeted in, so you don't actually have to have the 50000 to finish off the project because it's built into your loan. We only charge you what you do use of the 50000 in that budget. So if for some reason you over budgeted and you actually only end up using 30 or 35 grand of that 50, the remaining you don't get charged interest on because you didn't touch it. Uh, we do advance your initial, uh, we do advance an initial budget amount for your rehab to get you started where a lot of other hard money lenders reverse, do that backwards per se. You have to close, then you still have to have some sort of money to be able to get your project going. With us, we do a little bit differently. We give you a percent or a dollar amount of your total budget right back to you. So let's say you close today, you could immediately request tomorrow a chunk of your money, and we're gonna wire that to you and it'll be in your bank account within a couple of business days. And that's to get you going so you can get your project going overall, because sometimes, with closing costs, with these type of loans, they're very expensive. So sometimes you're, you don't have very much to be able to continue your project. That's where this loan type with us helps because we're giving you money back so you can get your project going. Um, and, and so that's predominantly the gist of hard money for the most part on a simple terms. Um, hard money lenders, we all do various types of loans. So I can do fix and flips. I can do bridge loans. I can do short term uh, refis, I can do ground up construction. So if you are a builder and you want to build something from ground up that you own land already, we can give you the funds for that. Uh, I can do small commercial as long as it's residential. I can actually do DSER loans now, which if uh, some people don't know what that is, but it's a debt service coverage ratio, which essentially is identical, similar to like a 30 year conventional loan but it's based more so off the property rather than you, the borrower. So I don't really care too much if you're employed or not. Uh, I just want to make sure the property is going to make money. Whereas if a conventional lender, they care about everything. Um, so that's the difference. So again, we can do just about everything. And these loans are specifically for business purposes. So they're not meant for you to try to buy something for yourself. Uh, they're not meant for that. They're strictly business only loans. Um, and then again, private money is similar to what I just mentioned, minus all the restrictions, minus literally everything. Um, if you have a family friend that just has some money, you tell them, hey, these are my terms, this is what I can make you, and they're just gonna kinda say yes, or they'll tell you what they do and don't want. Whereas if, uh, lenders, in some capacity, we tell you, no, this is what we're doing, versus private money, you literally can have that one-on-one -on -one and you can create your own terms. That's the nice thing about private money. And then seller financing. Seller financing in, in lamest terms is where you make the seller your bank. Kind of like private money, you tell them what you want to do and how it benefits them. But instead of going to get a loan from somebody, uh, whether that be, again, family friend or an actual institution lender like us, you literally just communicate with the actual seller and tell them, hey, you have equity. Here's a way we can structure this. Why don't you seller finance me this house? And same thing process, you literally make the terms with the seller. No bank involved, no other person, just you and the actual seller. Similar to private money, however, the, the private uh, money, you have to go and find it. The seller financing is literally whoever's selling you the house. You just communicate with them and figure out a structure that benefits both parties. And, and again, there's no, uh, there's no restrictions. It's as creative as you want to get, literally. That's how seller financing works in, in lamest terms. Um, and then again, a little bit of creative financing. So like I mentioned, there's so many different ways to creatively finance something rather than just buying something with 100% cash or a traditional financing. You can, again, use hard money lending. You can use private money. You can use seller financing. If you really want to get creative, you can take someone's mortgage and it's not an assuming a loan. It's literally doing a subject to. Um, there's, there's a plethora of different ways of financing a house. It's just getting creative. Nowadays, a lot of people complain because there's no deals and because the financing is not in place. It's just you're not maybe as creative yet, and uh, you just need to communicate with more people that have done deals and can give you a different way of how to make a deal rather than just trying to find a deal. A lot of times people just look at, what am I buying it for? What's the debt side of it going to cost me? And if you look at it that way, then it's very difficult to make a deal because that's all you know. Whereas if instead of uh, looking at it that way, look at it as if, okay, here's a house. How can I make this an actual deal? Whether that be 
doing a hard money loan, whether that be seller financing, whether that be private money, whether that be um, doing a subject to or just a plethora of other different ways um, uh, or even putting three of these together. You can do a hard money loan with a private note, uh, with seller financing, and then eventually take it out with conventional financing. That's like four different ways of doing this. But again, if you don't know that way of structuring stuff, it makes it very difficult. But that is what creative financing is. It's just definitions kind of in the title. Just get really creative and you'll finance it. Um, and then JVs. Uh, a JV is a joint venture. This is another term that kind of floats around. Uh, JVs can either be very beneficial or not. Again, uh, a JV is just some sort of partnership to whatever degree you want that to be with whoever you're partnering with. Again, whether that be an equity partner, whether that be you being a wholesaler and you're trying to pass another deal on to somebody else within your network. It's just literally doing a joint venture. You're working together. There's some level of agreement that both of you are going to be making a said dollar amount for doing this together. However, um, there's cons and pros to all of that, um, but that is what JV uh, essentially means there. And then, let's see here, set up, right? Okay, so Alex is gonna run through the numbers on a deal we're currently doing. Um, I'm kind of excited. I just know that Alex is pretty much the best deal in the industry right now, so he's who we use. I still don't understand the sheets, so I'm really <laughs> excited to learn. This project we closed on like four months ago, but this wholesaler contacted us, which is weird, um, because usually people are knocking down wholesaler's doors. This property was on a well. This hey, property- about him. He's, we're the only one getting the deals right now, so we don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, this wholesaler, we don't know how he got, this is the thing, is we don't know how he found us, but we've done three deals with him now, and they've been good deals, and um, so we have built a reputation through networking, we have closed a lot of deals, and we actually close, we're, we do not flake out on anything. Like, I will get to close to not making money before I will flake out on a deal, because I want that reputation, and mm. you have to figure in that cost. So we turned the deal down. He said he came to us, said, "Here's my price." And were we on the golf? Where were we on the golf course? Uh, we were trying to do something. All I know. Uh, yeah, we're in the middle of something, <laughs> and and he was like begging us, like, "Hey, I really want this. I really want to get it put together over the weekend." And I just kind of ran quick numbers, and I was like, "Well, that going to be like fifty. Like, we're not even going to talk. Just respectfully say, "Hey, that's not where my numbers are at. I think um, I think you should have better luck just putting on the market." And he came back and he's like, well, where would you like to be? And so I told him exactly where we'd like to be. And he had this, so how it works with a wholesaler is a wholesaler would go to a seller. A seller and the wholesaler would get under contract. Then the wholesaler goes trying to sell that contract and it can only bear what the market will pay. So when we said we wanted to pay $60,000 less for it, he had to go back to the seller and say, hey, I need to knock 60 grand off that. So uh, we, you know, it used to be you wanted to get every deal and you would get so bent out of shape out of them. Now you have to be really okay walking away because that's when you're <clears throat> sure of what's gonna happen. So we were willing to walk away. He came back and said, would you take it? And then Alex put the financing together for that. So the next sheet is the financing. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, well, I know this from the top of my head because this is where uh, I nerd out on this stuff. <laughs> so um, in short, everything on the left side is the loan uh, breakdown in sections. So you have the purchase price, you have the assignment fee, which is where the wholesaler is going to make their money. So the purchase price is the actual price that the wholesaler is contracting the actual uh, or buying this at on paper. And then the wholesale fee is what they're marking it up to the end buyer. Um, so we break those down specifically because we actually want to see what the cost is of the actual house. We don't care what wholesalers make because everyone needs to make some level of money. However, uh, we want to make sure on the debt side of stuff that we're actually seeing all the numbers correctly so we know we're not over leveraging ourselves. So therefore, we break this down in purchase price, uh, assignment fee, which is the fee that they make, and then the rehab amount that you are actually going to be using in the project. You add that up, you get your total cost. which and financing world, we call that LTC, loan to cost. Um, so uh, that's your total cost. 
uh, whether you are doing a refinance, a bridge loan, a fix and flip, a 30 year uh, DSCR loan, whatever it is, we notate, uh, notate it for you so we all are on the same page. Uh, this would be a fix and flip. And then we tell you if it's a six to 12 month term. All of our stuff is 12 months. However, it's an initial six month with an automatic six month extension, which equals out 12 months in total. Uh, but we always like making sure people understand that it's 12 months in total but it starts with an initial six with an automatic extension of another six. That may vary, but it's always 12 months. Uh, but we at least tell you exactly how it's structured out. The next piece is the loan amount. And we get to the loan amount by simply deducting your down payment. That's it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're able to go up to 90% if we're allowed to or if the deal makes sense. Um, and again, you just work the math backwards. So you take your total loan cost uh, where we're going to be okay leveraging this, which this came out to be, let's see, 77. Okay, yeah, so this was. This is the manufactured home, Auto well, and this was our third deal. Yes, so um, on a side note, lenders uh, to an extent are okay financing just about everything as long as the debt works for the, the, the lender. We are not a big fan of manufactured homes because, again, naturally, manufactured homes tend not to do as well as a normal stick built home, whatever that be a single family, multifamily, whatever. Um, it's just on paper, it's a little bit difficult for the end buyer to get financing or something is usually wonky. So therefore lenders tend to kick back on leverage. In this scenario, I did not know this was a manufactured home until <laughs> I think- We do, we do manufactured homes all, like Dylan calls me the queen of the white family. We flip manufactured homes all the time. Yes. So they're nothing different than us. So I yes. To so I didn't know that this was a manufactured home until I think four days before closing, which, right? And this was, and this was on my, on my behalf. I, I dropped the ball on that. Usually I'm very aware of what the project is. On this one, I, I totally spaced it out um, and for, found out four days. And so unfortunately, we had to re-leverage the debt on this because it was just a manufactured home. Um, so therefore, we ended at a uh, loan to cost of 77 point, what's that, uh, 97. So essentially, that is where we're at in leverage. So the down payment is that 96, is that what it is? Uh, 98, 800. Um, and that's where it breaks down. So when you see this, we're telling you, hey, this is your down payment. This is the leverage that we're at. And then as you go down, you have the two monthly payments. So again, with hard money lenders, typically, we charge you interest only payments. And because you roll in your rehab amount, we don't know if you're actually gonna use all of the rehab. So therefore there's no set payments. Whereas a regular loan, even with maybe with a private money lender, you have a set payment. But because we're lending you only on what you're actually gonna be using, we're only gonna charge you on what you actually do use. So therefore you have a low and then you have a high. Your low is meaning if you don't touch a single dollar of your rehab amount. Because in theory, if you don't touch anything, your loan balance stays the same. So in theory, your, your monthly payments stay the same, right? As you start touching the rehab amount, your monthly payments go up. If you do use the full rehab amount, then you have your max payment. It shouldn't surpass that because you've reached the max amount. Um, and it's based off of this one was 10% uh, of interest monthly. 10% um, in interest, yeah. So that is how this calculates. So you have your low and then you have your high. And then you scroll down a little bit and it says your loan cost. These are the two fees that we as a lender only charge. Everything else is outside of our scope. We do not charge anything else, which is your points, which I, I as a recap, points, uh, lend, hard money lenders, that is where they make their money. So we charge anywhere between a point and a half to two points. Uh, and then on this one, we were at uh, 1.75 and it's based off of the loan amount. So you kind of, this is how this does it all through Excel. But in essence, if you ever wanted to know what your points are, just simply take your loan amount, which in this case would be that uh, 339, you times that by 1.75 and that gets you the actual uh, cost for the, the loan itself, uh, the origination. And then we have a simple processing fee of 995. And that is it. The rest of these items here, the appraisal, insurance, taxes, all of that is an estimate. So we never know what those are. We just high end them just because I know sometimes they may come out high, but from all the loans that I've done, that is usually where they've maxed out. So I always put that until you get to closing. That's when you start actually seeing, all right, cool. My uh, insurance was 1100 bucks. 
but on here we banked 1500 bucks, so therefore your cash to close is gonna be $300 cheaper. And you see all this when you're, when you're closing because you have a settlement statement, which breaks this down, but in a nice, ni nicer, neater, simple, I guess, breakdown. And so that is what the left side of it is. On the right side, pretty standard stuff, so it just says a closing date, um, that stuff up there. And then there's two items that, as a hard money lender that we care about which is uh, values. So we wanna make sure that the value you're buying it at, the as is, meaning if you're buying this for 200, 300, whatever, that that value is correct, meaning you're not over-purchasing it. The second thing is we wanna make sure the ARV is gonna pencil out. Now, this may work differently with a lot of people, but it's pretty easy on the debt side of stuff to calculate this out, which just make sure uh, we are gonna tell you that we're not gonna to wanna to surpass a certain percentage. The max percentage that we can do typically is 70%. Every now and then we can go up to 75. So to figure that out is you take your loan amount. So after you deducted your down payment, you divide that by said percent, whether that be 65, 70, 75, and that'll give you a number. In this scenario, we went to 60. So we cut back the leverage because again, it was a manufactured home. So we wanted to make sure that this property would uh, hit an ARV, meaning when the appraiser goes out there, that this dollar amount that we want to make sure this value is met, that the, the, the appraiser sees this. Now, as you as an investor, you're going to usually do your research. You're going to figure out like, all right, cool. This is where my comps are coming out. And if you kind of want to work both sides, you could literally work the math backwards. So you take your purchase price, your rehab. If you want to be conservative, put 15% down. That gives you your loan amount. Divide that simply by 65 or 70 percent. That'll give you an ARV on the lender side of stuff. If your number of your comps is close to that or surpasses that, then you got a good deal for the most part. Um, if it's less than that, then you're going to need to come with more money because you're, we're not going to over leverage past a certain uh, percentage. So that is what the 60 percent is. So it just tells you that this is 60 percent of the ARV and that it needs to be uh, that number needs to be met. If it's not met you have to bring in the difference so we're back at 60% because we're not gonna go past that. It's kind of what it is but to that point. Um, and then again, so the middle section just describes our uh, rehab, way, the way it works because again, we advance you the rehab funds, we advance you 30% or 30 grand, whichever is lesser or immediately, essentially within a couple of business days. So again, uh, in this scenario, right, uh, her total cash to close was 108,000 uh, $378, and that is all down payment, origination fee, which are the points, the uh, appraisal that was estimated, taxes, insurance, all of that. Uh, that is what it costs to close on this loan. Now, us as a lender, we typically want to see that you have some reserves. Uh, usually, it's about six months. To calculate reserves, it's just six months' worth of interest-only payments, and we base that off of them on the high end. So you take the max uh, loan or the max monthly payment, times that by six, add that to the total cost of what your cash to close is, which came out to 128,000. That's what we're going to want to see that you have. How you have it, where you have it, we don't really care. Um, we just want to make sure that you have the funds, if need be, if you need it to liquidate a 401k, if you have stocks, bonds, CDs. Uh, retirement accounts, whatever. We just want to make sure that you have that, um, whether that be in one account or spread out through your accounts. Um, and this is one other way to analyze houses, properties, projects on a very, very small scale when you're looking at financing. And you can do this with anything. You can take off a bunch of these uh, numbers and really dumb it down if you're working with a private lender or even seller financing. Mm -hmm. If you really want to nerd out, you can you know, go into the weeds with this stuff. But in simplest terms, this is how every lender to some level of extent looks at a house and a project on the debt side of stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how that works out. And this is, I send this out to clients so they can play with this and put their numbers in. Because um, uh, usually people tell me, hey, how much is it going to cost to do this? And I always tell people, just be conservative on your stuff, no matter what. If you think you can get 10, just base it off of 15. If you think you can get 10 and a half, base it off of 11. Um, if you know your rehab budget is probably, 
going to be 50, but you think it might be 70, just base it off of 70, because in all these scenarios, you should be doing this on a conservative side. So you know on the debt side when you need the financing, does my math, does my uh, numbers pencil out, does this deal make sense? Uh, because I'm going to look at it the same way. They, one, because I am one giving you the money, but second, I invest so I know if it makes sense or not. Um, but yes, that's, that's how hard money lending works uh, on a small level uh, overall. And um, it is very nice to have if you know how to use it. It is definitely uh, something you want to know your numbers going into these things because it can get very expensive. Uh, so always plan accordingly and always talk to other people will make sure your financing is correct overall, but it is just another tool in your belt to make sure you can do deals. That's it.